you know, the West study, of course, started when I was when I was very young. You know, I love love them. So I, you know, I I talk a lot about, you know, I, I saw this video of West. there wasn't, you know, when we were kids or young adult kids into young adults, there wasn't a lot of footage of West playing. There was um, there was this one uh, episode of Jazz 625 from BBC television. It was about 35 minutes of him just I mean, and I, you know, I loved Wes from the records. I loved him. I loved him so much. And then that saw that video and I couldn't, we talk about this a lot where it's like, you couldn't believe the, the ease and the joy and the, but he was also just so, so, so great. And so, um, and watching the thumb live in this video or, you know, recorded the video of the thumb just blew, blew my mind. And so I remember just, we were always, you know, rewinding the tape and the tape was fuzzy because it was dubbed over a hundred times. <laughs> Everybody, it's Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com, and welcome to another episode of Around Town. Today, I have got Tim Fitzgerald. Of course, everyone knows Tim. He's been in a hot dog show. He was at the Talking Jazz show at the hot dog stand. And uh, But now we're on Zoom, and he is obviously in a club looking very, very schvelt and getting ready for his gig. He has a new <laughs> recording out with his group, Tim Fitzgerald's Full House. And the name of the recording is Tim Fitzgerald's Full House. And they are going to be celebrating the release of that November 18th and 19th at the Green Mill right up there at Broadway and Lawrence. So let's talk all about the recording, about the group, and of course about the release party. Tim, welcome to Around Town. Thanks for jumping on for a minute. Mike, thanks. And I've got to say, you still a uh, handsome guy, even without hot dog and fries <laughs> in your face. I kind of didn't recognize you at first, but now... Now I'm there. I miss, I miss, I, honestly, I miss the hot dog, but good I'm okay. News. Good, yeah, good yeah. news. I just worked out a deal. We're going to start doing in-person things at another place in Bridgeport and it's going to be great. So stay tuned. Dogs are, okay. Okay. Might be more Thanks. meatball sandwiches. We might be doing meatball sandwiches, okay. but get ready. <laughs> okay. Be careful what you wish for. I just learned that lesson because it's not, <laughs> it's back. All right. Um, so you and I could talk about a lot of other things for hours and hours and hours, which we will do. Yeah, November 18th and 19th over at the Green Mill on your set break. So let's talk about this. Now you've had yeah. this recording. Well, first you've had this group, Full House. You put this group together several years ago, which yeah. obviously uh, Wes Montgomery is a huge uh, influence on you and someone oh, you yeah. studied deeply and you put out that great book about with his transcriptions, which we'll talk about for a second. But then you yeah. put this group together, which is kind of an interpretation of Wes's tunes with a full horn section and of course a ripping rhythm section and everything else. So let's talk a little bit about the new recording and how you decided, I know you've been playing live a lot, but you finally decided to put this thing down and record it and put out an album with this group. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a long-term project. I mean, yeah. this, I mean, the way, as you said, you know, the West study of course started when I was, when I was very young, you know, I love, love them. So I, you know, I, I talk a lot about, you know, I saw this video of West. there wasn't, you know, when we were kids, or young adult kids into young adults, there wasn't a lot of footage of Wes playing. There was um, there was this one uh, episode of Jazz Six Two Five from BBC Television. It was about thirty five minutes of him just. I mean, and I you know I loved Wes from the records. I loved him. I loved him so much. And then that saw that video, and I couldn't. We talk about this a lot, where it's like you couldn't believe the the ease and the joy and the but he was also just so, so, so great. And so, um, and watching the thumb live in this video or, you know, recorded the video of the thumb just blew, blew my mind. And so I remember just, we were always, you know, rewinding the tape and the tape was fuzzy because it was dubbed over a hundred times and it was, yeah. And so, and that is what actually became the book. Cause I spent a lot, I spent a lot of time. I was like, I remember thinking, this is many years ago. It's like, oh, I wish someone had transcribed this because I would love to play what, and I was like, why don't I do it? you know what i should i should transcribe it. and it it took a long time i spent um you know I spent a couple of years with that 35 minutes because also the technology you know it's just very very slow about yeah. slow going and so i finally got that book out and i think it was it was about 2009 or so that book came out mm -hmm. and um so i'm still loving wes's music and loving wes and getting deeper into it all the time as i'm growing as a musician and in 2015 had the idea to put some of this material to, to a band and to a horn section. And so the, one of the, the, the goals of this band was to kind of reimagine and uh, Wes's, Wes's music for us and to do our own thing with it. 
including, you know, it's all almost all West songs, the compositions themselves and are arranging the, the melodies. But also, I, I don't know if, um, if all your uh, viewers know, but Wes was really famous. One of the things he was famous for were these four note chord solos. So on the guitar, he'd be play, he'd start off, he'd be playing single notes and he'd switch to octaves and build and he would build to these chord solos, which were really magnificent. You know, they yeah. sound great, they're yeah. funky, they're clever, they're interesting, they're soulful. And so what I did is I took some of those solos and put them to the horns. So when I'm playing, so I'll be soloing on the record and my solo is hopefully growing and growing. And then at the end of my solo, we'll come in, the horns will join me and then we'll play Wes's chord solo together. And we call that a soli. That, so the solo all together becomes soli, mm -hmm. S-O-L-I. And it's like the race. And that's kind of one of the special things about this group is that uh, we've got these solis. Yeah. And that started, we started playing in 2015. 2017, we played Chicago Jazz Fest. Um, 2019, we did the rec started the record. Something happened in 2020. I don't know what. Something big. <laughs> so, no, I heard about something. I don't know. It was, it was, I don't know. A lot of people weren't out that much anymore. But you know, it's something. Yeah, we got off track. <laughs> My bad. And then we uh, <laughs> we came back, and I finished in 2021, and um, and then the record is finally out now, 2022. So it's. It's yeah, it's been a it's been a it's a long term project for me. For yeah. Sure. Well, and, and, and also, I mean, just talking a little bit about the book and about the transcription of it. I mean, you, you took I remember talking to you about this in depth, but I mean, you were very meticulous because, you know, you're talking about his thumb you talk about all these different. Yeah. There's so many little nuances that you caught that, you know, if somebody was just whipping through it. Maybe they could transcribe it, but it wasn't really a true transcription of exactly what was there. And you made a very, very uh, determined effort to make sure you got every nuance that you could possibly get, I think, with that book. And then when you listen to the music with this group, Full House, you hear those nuances because I know that oh, you arranged wow. it. I mean, I could hear it. I remember yeah. we had you at the Deer Park Jazz Fest one year. Oh, right. Of course. You loved it. And uh, but it was because of the way all those nuances were featured oh. in the music and in the arrangements. And of course, with the rhythm section, you've got everything else. But I mean, that makes yeah. a big difference because you're not just schlepping through West Montgomery tunes. You're very, very meticulous about it. I mean, it, it, it oh, wow. talk a little bit about just the arranging aspect of putting something like this together, making sure all those nuances are there. Well, you know, it's I think when it, when it comes back to the book and the transcription, um, <clears throat> one of the the advantages I had and the what I was so lucky with to have to work with the video, because you know I, I don't know uh, if you know, but you know, guitar can be a very redundant instrument. There's a lot of different ways to play the same note. Different, yeah. you know, the C can be it'll see it can be here, it can be here, it can be all these places, which finger. And the, and um, with the video, there's not much of a doubt. It's like, he's playing it right here, he's using yeah. this finger. And there were a lot of surprising moves from Wes. I mean, even though, even those of us who thought we kind of knew what he was doing physically, I thought it a pretty good idea. Um, also, you know, the person who really, really changed my world for understanding Wes's physicality, I, when I studied with Rodney Jones in the 90s, we really got into into the physicality of Wes, how you know what fingers, how many fingers, three, two, you know, up thumb, downstrokes. Is it a downstroke? Is it upstroke? Is it both? What's going yeah. on? And he really opened the doors for me to even start thinking about that. And he really helped me so much. And then when I spent all that time with the with the video, it's like, okay, now I'm seeing the physicality of what he's doing. But um that's for also for the book, but for the I think that's with us for sure with the band, but of course we're not really doing, you know, we're trying to do it pretty differently than Wes in a lot of ways. Like the, we, I hope the foundation is exactly what he was doing, but then one of the goals for the, the uh, for the record is, and the band in general, uh, like for many jazz musicians, is to, we want to learn from what Wes did and and build and internalize it and enjoy it and love it, accept it as this amazing, amazing gift to the world that Wes and his peers created um, and to do our to do our own thing with it. So the, arra the arrangements are pretty different than Wes, but inspired by, yeah. So yeah. It's like the idea of like sounding just like Wes or something, it's like, I mean, I couldn't if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to be 
exactly like him, you know, I mean, good luck, <laughs> you know, but it's also what I want to do is I want to get as close as I can to his music and then do my own thing or, yeah. or our own thing with the arrangement. So, yeah, so it's definitely, I think that foundation, I hope uh, that I'm really glad to hear that foundation shows in some ways. Uh, it's well, important. It's, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's an homage to Wes, really. I mean, that's, oh, that's for sure. what it is, you know, and the, the sure. before we get into the horn section, talk about the rhythm section, because, you know, that's one <laughs> yeah. thing that, well, and, and that's so important because everybody, I mean, the reason why I love listening to Wes and I'm a drummer is because it's, it doesn't matter what's happening. He could be playing a ballad. It is grooving. I mean, there's a strong, heavy pocket, man, no matter what tempo, what's happening. And that's part of the allure of the whole thing. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love Pat Martino so much too, man. I mean, that, that pocket, he wasn't messing around and Wes was not yeah. messing around, you know? So talk a little bit about how important it is to have that rhythm section. Who's in the rhythm section on this recording. And, um, you know, talk a little bit about that rhythm section and how that pertains to creativity on the guitar, just in general. I mean, having that, bass underneath you when you're soloing oh yeah well so the rhythm section for the green mill show and the records it's the same we've got uh george flutus uh drumming drums and cymbals george who's also known as a uh, force of nature i don't know <laughs> <laughs> what i mean powerhouse i mean he's really i mean he's i don't know for your listeners that don't know george i mean who did he not play with one of these guys that's you know he's he was a uh, Ray Brown's drummer for several years. I heard him with Cedar Walden. I heard him with Dr. Lyon Smith. I heard him with, it's ridiculous. He was who, who he's played with over the years and always doing it from Chicago. Interestingly, you know, right. it's like, yeah, yeah. he and, never left. <laughs> right. I mean, incredible around the world with all our heroes. Um, and then uh, Christian Dillingham, who's amazing on bass and Tom Bites is on piano. Also amazing. My, my favorite guys, some of my favorite guys to play with period. I'm again, uh, really lucky for the record and because I, I, I did get great guys. It's yeah. Like really, I mean, in the band, everything. Christian's been with it both of, uh, just since, since the very first show, George as well and Tom. Um, you know, those guys, they propel for sure. I mean, yeah, George's, uh, but, but the same, the Christian, Tom, they put, they put forward kind of an incredible feeling underneath and behind. And when everything is just right for me, if I'm relaxed and playing well, I actually can just sit, sit right there. I mean, they do it. And I just sit there and create, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of amazing feeling to play on top of those guys. Also, I noticed something, uh, a lot of these guys, when they get in the studio, there's another gear or also for the big festivals, another gear, yeah. you know, with, it's like, you know, I think that's probably how it was with, um, with, with all the masters, you know, with, they came to play at, you know, George sits down in the studio. It's like, oh, it's on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, but he's still laughing and being, sure, you know, his goofy self, but it was really, it was really fun to record. Well, and that makes a big difference too. I mean, this is a little bit uh, off, off the West Montgomery topic, but it's, it pertains to it. I mean, especially with somebody like Wes or take any of the greats, take any of the greats now, you know, it, it, there's another gear that these guys can just walk in and bam, it's, it's, it's like on. And yeah, I mean, I experienced that. It took me a while just to get used to being able to play at that high, high level right away. You know what I mean? Like it is like, Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Game on. Here we go. I mean, and if you're not hanging, you're definitely not hanging. You can, you're noticeably not hanging if you're not hanging right off the bat. So it takes a lot. And that's some of the things that some of the younger musicians I don't think have ever experienced and to get to that, just wham, you know, I mean, they could have traveled for 15 hours that day and they got to play a gig. They're not phoning it in. It's like going yeah. down. And that's, that's one of the things that this band that you have that you hear right off the bat, because I mean, when it hits, when you guys hit the stage, it's like swinging, man, it's, it's, it's on, you know, so talk a little bit about the, the horn section too, because, uh, you know, this horn section uh, takes a, takes a certain horn player to be able to play this kind of stuff and put it in the pocket where it needs to go. So talk a little bit about them. Sure. Well, on, on the recording, uh, it's, it, it, we have Victor Garcia on trumpet, Greg Ward on alto and Chris Madsen on tenor. Uh, yeah, they're my, they're, they're amazing. And then for the Green Mill show, we've actually got Marcus Carroll subbing for, uh, who is outstanding, subbing for, yeah. for Victor. 
And we have Brent Griffin Jr. Something for uh, Greg, uh, Greg and uh, they're both out of town, Greg and uh, Vic. And uh, Brent Griffin, who I've, well, I don't know if I should say this. I've given him the nickname. It's, it's BG Jr. are his initials. So I call him Big June. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe you can edit that out, I guess. <laughs> maybe oh, just... it's staying in, man. Everybody's going to oh, start great. calling him that, man. You know, <laughs> I, I, it's not nice. It's Big June. Yeah. He's, he's, he's great. I love his playing so much. He's very free. Like Greg, he's uh, very free and also super swinging and also knows so much great language. But got that free, free spirit. Um, Victor, what a monster. I mean, Victor is a great. Uh, yeah. Great, great soloist, but also can play lead, plays plays the hell out of the parts. Um, uh, Marcus, same thing. Great, you know, power, power players, creative. Uh, Chris Madsen, kind of under underrated in some ways. Not underrated with me, but I think just absolute fantastic musician, killing, swinging, big sound, clever, interactive. Yeah, I mean, I just every one of these guys is. They're, they're my heroes honestly they play i want to play like i want to play as well as these guys someday they're just yeah. they're amazing well uh, so let's uh, remi remind everybody green mill november 18th and 19th yeah. 8 p.m till midnight of course greenmilljazz.com is the website right there at uh lawrence and broadway all roads leave to uptown as the great dave <laughs> yeah. general usually says yeah and uh let's send everybody over to tim fitzgerald music.com so they can pick up the release of course it's on seller music so congratulations right. on that oh, and that, yeah seller live yeah sellerlive.com and it's on seller yep. music right that's the record label so it's seller, is seller, seller live, live i think is the yeah. label <laughs> we should know this <laughs> well, either way, it's there and it's been recorded and all that good stuff. And, you know, we we were talking before we came on. I mean, you've been doing some playing. You you go to Alaska. You just came back from Alaska. You're talking about yeah. some European things and some some other things that you're you're working on for the uh, 2023 and put yeah. this thing out. You're probably going to get some festivals. And of course, you're you're uh, you know, who knows? Maybe you'll get a Grammy nomination. This is being submitted for certain things for that. So congratulations on that. Thanks. But, yeah. you know, what? outside of the mill and all that i mean are you planning maybe like uh you know 2023 trying to get out on the road with this uh with this group oh, and doing yeah. some things? absolutely yeah we just um i just yesterday we're working on um this guy word that we're going to be in uh istanbul in um april april 2023 wow so yeah that's pretty uh and i'll be a smaller it's gonna we're like bringing the whole band just, you know we're gonna have some some of us will go kind of thing it's a yeah. smaller but yeah Headed over. Uh, it's been great. Yeah. So this fall, yeah, we played in Alaska again as we do. Yeah, yeah. Love it, we love it up there. Homer, Alaska. We love Homer, Alaska. And we then I came back and I played. I got to play a couple concerts. I uh, went down to uh, Memphis, and then I went to uh, Little Rock, actually North Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, the guitarist uh, Ted Ludwig brought me down for his series. He's got a series down there. And then uh, I think we're gonna. I was talking with Abigail Rickards, a singer I love working with, and uh, I think she's going back to Mesro. We were, I forgot when we're. I think she's talking about the right in the new year. So we'll go out, go out, go out to New York again. Yeah. So it's like it, yeah, it's 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 rolling a little bit. There's some talk. Um, there's a talk about something maybe in Rome and something maybe in Athens as well. So we'll we'll see what's you know. It's just kind of it's just starting to. Go. It looks really fun, honestly. I had a I always have a blast in Alaska. I had an amazing time in. Uh, Memphis and Little Rock. So yeah, I'm I'm into it. And my guitar has not been destroyed on the planes. So that's <laughs> it's a plus. That's positive. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's kind of a well, that's a whole other story. That's a real specific jazz guitar discussion. Yeah. How to get the guitar on the plane and all those strategies. But well, I uh, I, I have to check my symbols because they won't let me through security with the symbols. Yeah, it's gotta be stressful. And you just uh, hope they're there when you get off. <laughs> yeah, and I guess have a backup plan and insurance and all that stuff. But I mean, well, I, can, wow. I mean, I'm I'm good at playing drums without cymbals, so we'll just have a little quieter night. Really? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Well, anyways, all right. See, we're gonna digress, and then it's gonna go south. So we're gonna stay on point here. <laughs> okay. We're, we're okay. We haven't gone south yet. That's good. Focused on the Green Mill here. So November 18th, 19th, greenmilljazz.com. Uh, and of course, timfitzgeraldmusic.com. 
guys, you can listen to this thing online. You can buy it. You can get the digital release, all that stuff. But seeing them live and seeing them play this and seeing them blow their solos and all interact in a live setting is, is you have to see it live. So November 18th and 19th, they're at the mill. Don't miss it. Tim, as always, thanks for being on, man. Congratulations on this recording. Congratulations on the whole project. I've watched you since the beginning of this thing with your transcriptions all the way through. So can't <laughs> so wait to see what happens. Like... Can't, well, I can't wait to see the next, uh, what happens next, 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 because I think there's some big stuff coming in 2023. So wonderful. Mike, thanks. It's always, always great to talk to you. We could, uh, yeah, we could go on for a while. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, man, definitely. And of course, thanks to everybody for watching and all the information about all things Chicago Jazz at chicagojazz.com. We got a new membership, Jazz Gold membership, which is free to join. You're going to get a bunch of lots of great free stuff. So be sure to hit that up on chicagojazz.com. And until next time, hopefully I will see you all somewhere out on the scene.